The global population continues to face many challenging situations daily. Climate change, financial losses, fear, anxiety, sickness, death. It may sometimes seem like this season of gloom will never end and many are losing hope. The future may be daunting, but in the midst of your hopelessness, I can assure you that God, who is the creator of this world, still has the world in the palm of his hands. And for this reason, you can still have hope.
We welcome you again to the Wednesday night Bible study for the uh, Stone Crest uh, Church of Christ. Uh, we are as pleased as good, good punch each Wednesday night uh, as you uh, join in to study with us from uh, the Word of God. Because of the immensity of the message and the brevity of time, uh, I want to hurriedly invite your attention again to Matthew chapter 1. Uh, we've been looking at Jesus's messy uh, family tree. Uh, what I've been trying to share uh, with you is that uh, all of us have a past, but you don't have to be uh, defined by your past. You don't have to be deterred from your present and future purpose because of the stuff in your past. Uh, I, I'm preaching on Sundays at Stonecrest Church, uh, a new uh, heart for a new start. And I'm trying to help our people to understand uh, that uh, the new year brings challenges to, to, to all of us, but it's an opportunity for us to reassess, uh, to uh, readjust to uh, the things that had happened uh, the previous 12 months. So, uh, uh, and, and to do that, uh, and, and besides, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things uh, become new. That is the genesis of that uh, uh, sermon series. But but on Wednesday night, and you will hear some of this from, from Sunday and from Wednesday. So just, just get ready for it, Stone Crest. Uh, and for those of you who join us, uh, we would encourage you to join us sometimes even in the physical building uh, on Sunday morning. But we've been looking uh, uh, for uh, encouragement, uh, and, and I've been trying to show you that not only do all of us have a past, uh, some of our past are real messy. They're, they're, they're real dysfunctional. Uh, and you don't have to be upset about that because you could not, you cannot determine where you came from. <laughs> I was born in a little town called Woodville uh, in the state of Texas uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the family of Fred and Miranda uh, Barclay. Uh, I, I'm from a family of 15 brothers and sisters. I'm number 14 uh, in that pecking order. I am next to the youngest. Uh, and uh, let me be just be brutally honest with you. If I had to choose some of my own siblings, uh, I would cast a no vote. <laughs> but mama and daddy didn't ask me about my permission. They didn't ask me about my judgment. But had they asked me about my judgment and my permission, uh, I, I would certainly cast a no vote uh, to some of my brothers, uh, and to some of my sisters, I, I would have even cast a no vote uh, to my own daddy. But watch this. I, I didn't have a vote in it. I had nothing to do with it. And the same thing is true about you. And what I've been trying to share with you is that looking at the, uh, the family tree of Jesus, looking at the lineage of Jesus, uh, Jesus came from a messy dysfunctional uh, lineage. Oh, but though uh, he had no control over where he came from, uh, he did have control uh, over where he went in life. And watch this, and so do you. So we've been looking at uh, some of these scandalous uh, characters uh, from uh, uh, the life of Jesus. Uh, I suggested to you last week, as you see the graphic on the screen, that there are times that people go to a website called Ancestry.com, uh, trying to find their roots, trying to find uh, their history. Uh, and even though uh, I am an African-American man, uh, if we go uh, 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 generations and generations back, into the Barclay family clan. Uh, not only can you trace it out of Africa, you can trace it 
out of Europe. Mm. So all my kinfolk don't look like me. And all your kinfolk don't look like you. Uh, some of you need to remember that there was a point in time uh, in our journey, even in this country, uh, where uh, our ancestors were slaves and they were raped by uh, the master of the plantation. Uh -huh. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. We're getting close to February. Maybe you may hear me. And, and this is why uh, when you go back in our history, uh, there were two kinds of slaves. Uh, th th there was a slave that worked in the field. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a slave that worked in the house. And the slave that worked in the house didn't always look like his brothers and sisters who worked in the field. Uh-huh. Go, go, go on over to Ancestry. Uh, dot com and you'll discover <laughs> that, that 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 not all your kinfolk uh, look uh, and, and had the skin complexion that you had. Okay, okay. Now, having said that, uh, again, let me just quickly review what I did last week. Uh, often overlooked in the genealogical record uh, of Jesus are some scandalous folk uh, in his family tree. I suggested to you. Uh, on last week, as the graphic uh, portrays, that God uses imperfect people to accomplish His perfect plan. Let, let, come on, let me let me let me let me back that thing up. Let me rewind that thing. Hit pause and then hit play. Uh, I, I said that God uses imperfect people to accomplish His perfect plan, and, and some of us need to understand that. That that, that 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 God's salvation uh, can bring you from the guttermost to the uttermost, and there's some there, there's some gutter people in all of our past, uh, but God God uses people, uh, imperfect people, uh, to accomplish uh, His perfect plan, and I'm gonna show you. In fact, I've been showing you some of these uh, imperfect people. When you go to Matthew chapter one, beginning at verse number two, uh, the first three names heading the list of Jesus' genealogical line as it is traced through Joseph. Now, when you read Luke's account, uh, Luke's genealogical line is traced through Mary and it goes back to Adam. Joseph's genealogical line uh, is traced back uh, to David that traces it all the way back to Abraham. This, th this, is, uh, this is the line by which uh, Joseph has come through. Luke 3 traces the line through Mary. Now, I want you to watch this. Uh, in Joseph's genealogical line, um, the first three names head in the list, watch this, are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now you're talking about some bad boys. You're talking about uh, some scandalous scoundrels. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are absolutely gotta, watch this, at the beginning. Ooh. I said at the beginning. They, 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 they live in the gutter. They, 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 they have a Gutter-like mentality. See, it's, it's not how you start out, it's how you finish. Ooh, doctor, teaching that Bible up in here tonight. See, it's not how you start out, it's how you finish. Because, because all of us, mm, at the start of our journey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Be honest with the brother. You, you ain't always been what you are right now. And thank you. Uh, thank God for the grace of God. Uh, some of us shouldn't even be alive. I I'm one of them. Uh, some of us shouldn't even be alive because of our behavior and our mentality in years gone by. But what, what, like Seely, I still here. Uh, why are we still here? Because God still has purpose. For all of our lives, we may have been jacked up like Abraham in the in the past, but when God 
uh, start working in us and on us and through us. Look what we have uh, uh, become. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, uh, I, I'm glad that my picture right now don't look like my picture 50 years ago. Ooh. Mm. Oh, praise the Lord. I, I, I know Sister Barclay is at home right now. Just shout. Ooh. Had y'all seen him 50 years? Ooh. Uh, okay, Sister Barclay, that's enough of that. All right. Now, I want you to watch this. I, I want you to watch this. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were scandalous scoundrels. That's how they started out. That's not how they finished the race. Ooh, these are guys you, 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 you're not going to invite over for an evening meal or even a midday meal or even breakfast. But I want you to watch this. But when God got through with him, Abraham mm, is a man after God's own heart. Jacob, uh, whose name was changed to Israel. But watch this. A whole country is named after Jacob. But he was a deceiver. But he was a trickster. A people is named after Jacob, Jacob, in the Hebrew language. Isn't that interesting? But it didn't start out that way. What I'm trying to tell you is, regardless of how you start out, you don't have to finish like you started out. Now, let's, we, we, we looked at Abraham uh, last week, and we saw how dysfunctional uh, uh, he was. You'll remember, qu quick review, you'll remember how he goes over into Egypt. There's this king by the name of Abimelech. Uh, and uh, uh, kings in that day, when they saw a beautiful woman, they saw an attractive woman, uh, uh, because they were kings, uh, they could have her. They, they, they could take her. But in order to take her, they couldn't take married women. And so when they saw a woman that they really liked to become a part of their harem, her husband had an untimely accident. <laughs> Her husband had an untimely death. And Abraham knew that. So he and uh uh Sarah uh you know concocted this uh this 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 half truth, this this lie uh that said, listen, when we get older, baby girl, tell him you my sister. In other words, Abraham was willing uh to let her be raped in order to save his own life. Say what? Abraham was willing to give her up in order to save himself. Watch this. And so there is this king in Genesis chapter 26. And I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 20, uh, where Abimelech sees her and decides he wants to take her. And God has to speak to the brother in a dream and said, hey, man, don't you touch that woman. Uh, she's a married woman. And uh, Abimelech wakes up and calls Abraham and says, man, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then uh, Abimelech talks to God and says, well, I didn't touch her. First of all, I didn't touch her. But but he told me she was his sister. In fact, she was his sister. So God, don't judge my nation because these folk lied to me. I, look, 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 I ain't going to touch her. And he didn't. And he let them go. I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this. Abraham is going to have a son eventually mm. uh, by the name of Isaac. Now, of course, he has another son. Uh, his firstborn son is called Ishmael. I, I told you the story last week, so uh, I, I don't need to repeat all of that again. J just, just go to Genesis uh, 18 through Genesis 20 and read about Ishmael uh, and, and, and the handmaid by the name of Hagar. Now, now, having said that, uh, uh, Abraham eventually has a son by Sarah, and his name is Isaac. I want you to watch this. If you are looking at the screen, uh, Lee Dog, put it on the screen for me. Um, Isaac is Abraham's son by Sarah, and it demonstrates that the fruit, that the apple, does not fall too far from the tree. What do you mean by that, Doc? What I mean is this. The same lie that Abraham told 
about his wife being his sister. And I told you last week, uh, some of that lie was the truth. And I showed you last week that uh, 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 Sarah was his half sister. They had the same daddy, but they didn't have the same mama. Uh, but, but, but don't miss the point. Watch this. Abraham, the family is so jacked up that 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 Abraham marries his half sister. Ooh we now of course that's not against the law. Now later on in the development of the nation, it it, it became against the law. But at this juncture in human history, it was not frowned upon. Now if you go all the way back to Adam and Eve. <laughs> You know, I ain't but two folk on the earth. And then when they had kids and then those kids got married. So you can now begin to see how that at the early beginning of the earth and the population of the earth, uh, close relatives were married. Well, to some degree, that's still going on here. Now, there have been thousands of years between Abraham uh, and uh uh, and and Adam, but but again, the earth is still populating itself, and so uh, this was allowed for close family relatives to marry one another in order to populate the earth. Now, you and I wouldn't think about marrying our sister. We we wouldn't think about marrying our nieces and our nephews. And watch this: our brothers' children. I'm going to show you an incident tonight <laughs> where a man fathered his own grandchildren. Ooh, let me hear him get to that. Let me hear him get to that. Mm. All right. I, I want you to watch this. Uh, 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 Abraham's son is named Isaac. Uh, Isaac is going to tell the same lie that, uh, that his wife, Rebecca, uh, who who's a brick house? She's fine. Uh, she is attractive. She's beautiful. And, and, and when you when you read the story, uh, let me put it on the screen for you. Uh, uh, as it goes to the same area, to the same place that had the same king as his father Abraham had gone years before. Well, look, 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 look at the screen. Genesis 26, 6 says, So Isaac settled in Gerar, the same place that Abraham went. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, My wife thinking, lest the men of the place should kill me because of Rebekah, because she was attractive in appearance. And then verse uh, 8 of Genesis 26 says, when he had been there a long time, Abimelech, is that name familiar? You heard it last week. Abimelech, king of the Philistines, uh, looked out a window and saw Isaac laughing with Rebekah, his wife. So Abimelech called Isaac and said, behold, she is your wife. How then can you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, because I thought, lest I die because of her. Isn't that interesting? Father, son, sins, just continually, generation after generation after generation. See, the same stuff today. We're doing the same stuff that Papa Nim did. We're doing the same stuff that, that Grandpapa Nim did. At some point in time, we have to break the cycle. Mm. Oh, I, 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 oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm going to come back on a notification and, and, and address that issue. Uh, because it needs addressing. Uh, oh, oh, watch this. Watch this. So we left Abraham. We've gone to Isaac. Isaac now has two sons. Ooh, y'all need to hear this one. Isaac has two sons. His sons are Esau, the oldest, Jacob, the younger of the two. And watch this. These two boys, while they were still gestating in, in, in Rebekah's womb, 
watch this, had issues one with another. The text says that they, they, they were even warring and fighting before they got to the outside. Uh, one, one, one grabbed the other's heel as he was coming uh, out of the womb. <laughs> Interesting. Estrangement, hostility, sibling rivalry was occurring inside of the womb. Uh, and listen, all that I'm saying tonight, I'm putting scriptures up here. Uh, so you can go and you can read the story. We're not going to have time to read uh, the entirety of all of these stories. But I'm going to put the, uh, the scripture references up uh, so that you can go and read them. Please take note uh, of them. I want you to watch this. Uh, their mother, by the name of Rebecca, watch this, of both boys, manipulates her husband, Isaac, because he's old now almost blind and watch this the boys already have sibling rivalry going on and then you have their mother playing favorites taking advantage of her husband and their father because he's old and can barely see. You, 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 you know the story. It's in Genesis chapter 27. Where she works with Jacob to manipulate, to scheme, to deceive Esau, the oldest of two boys, out of the birthright. Now, the birthright in this culture gave, uh, gives the older child, number one, authority over the family. When the father uh, uh, is dead. Number two, whatever the father has, the oldest child gets two thirds of the inheritance. While everybody else have, have to split theirs. So, so birthright was extremely important. See, right now, I told you I'm number 14 out of 15 boys. Well, the, there were nine boys. Six girls. Seven of my brothers are dead. Only two of us left. I'm the patriarch. My family. I'm the head of my family. Got three sisters left. All of them are older than me. But they look to me. It's the patriarch. I'm the head of our family. They respect that right. Well, in, in, in this day, uh, the, the head of the family, the oldest child is going to get two-thirds of all that the father has. All right? Now, Rebecca works with Jacob in order to deceive Esau and Isaac. And Isaac ends up putting his hand uh, on the wrong son, if you will. Okay, it's done now. It's done now. It's one of those irrevocable oaths. Now that it is done, it's done. And it caused even more rift between the boys. So much so that Esau seeks out to kill Jacob. And Jacob has to get out. Of wait, wait, wait a minute, Doc. You said this is Jesus' family tree? Uh-huh. Didn't I tell you it was messy? Didn't I tell you it was jacked up? So, 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 so Jacob has to get out of Dodge because Esau is trying to kill him. And, 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 and Jacob's mother, Rebecca, sends him down to where her brother lives. Now, now come here. Oh, this thing about to get good. When Jacob gets down there, <laughs> when Jacob gets down there to, to his mother's brother, whose name is Laban. Now, I want you to watch the story, how it's going to unfold after I read the scripture. Now, I want you to watch this. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Watch this. Abraham fathers Isaac. Isaac fathers Jacob. And watch this. And Jacob 
begets Judah and his brethren. Why does he point that out? You, you, you better come here. Because Jesus is a direct lineage back to Judah. You, you, you miss something here. I'm going to show you in just a second where Jacob has 12 sons. Why is Judah the only one mentioned? <laughs> oh, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to watch this. Watch this. Uh, Jacob is, 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 is living with his uncle Laban. Uncle Laban uh, is going to have two daughters. But, but before I get, watch this. When it gets there uh, and he starts working with Uncle Laban, Uncle Laban has two daughters. Now, I want you to watch the screen because Jacob is going to end up with four wives. <laughs> Count them. One, two, three, four. Unos, dos, tres, cuatro. Where I'm from in the hood. Four, not four. Four. Four wives. And from these four wives, he's going to have 13 children. Twelve sons, twelve boys, and one daughter. Come here. The first two of those wives sisters. Their name is Leah and Rachel. Oh, go to Genesis 29 and read the story. Read, read, read the whole chapter. <laughs> uh, the, the text says of Leah that uh, uh girl has an eye issue. Mm. Uh, uh, in, in, in fact, uh, Moses, the writer uh, of, of Genesis, is being diplomatic. He, he's being kind. He's being sensitive. He's being politically correct when he says that Leah is tender eyed. <laughs> He's being nice. He's being nice. He don't want to hurt a feeling. But guess what tender eyed mean? It means cross eyed and ugly. This girl's tears didn't run down her cheek, they ran down her back. She cross eyed. She ugly. I mean, I mean, you know, don't act like you've never seen anybody like this. You know, you, you're sitting there looking at somebody and, 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 and they're looking over there and you're looking at them. Uh, th th this girl is ugly, but watch this. Rachel is beautiful. And, and Laban promised him if he worked for him seven years, you work for me seven years, and I give you Rachel. He works seven years, but where at night? He wakes up the next morning, and he turns over in the bed, and he's, ah! he said, it's Leah. I, I don't know why I took him on. Oh, okay, all right. I, I, I wish I was in a Bible class with, with just adults. Uh, and we can work this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, bad preacher, bad preacher. So do you, I got to be better. I, I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this. Uh, and so, uh, uh, now Jacob is upset. Because watch this. The deceiver has not been deceived. Okay, I got too far to go. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He said, man, you gave me the one woman. Laban has to tell him, he said, man, based upon our culture, I, I can't give you the younger daughter. The oldest daughter got to marry first. I got to be sure I get all these girls out the house. And if I give you the pretty one, then the ugly is going to be with me all, all the rest of her days. And we, we, we can't have that. I need to get her out the house. And he said, now you can have this one, but you got to work seven more years. Come, come on, y'all. Now, you know math ain't my best subject, but I can count to 15. And seven plus seven is 14. This man works 14 years. 
for one woman. And I know, so, okay, I, I said, I'm going to be nice. I, I, I'm going to be nice. Okay. All right. So, 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 so I want you to watch this. Uh, the beautiful, gorgeous, attractive Rachel has a problem. She can't have kids. She's barren. But Leah is dropping them. I mean, you're talking about fertile. Every time he drinks water, she gets pregnant. Watch this. <laughs> I hope you're looking at the screen. The first two wives, Leah and Rachel, are not only sisters, but they're Jacob's relatives. They're his nieces. The man is his nieces. Okay, I got too far to go here. I want you to watch this. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, of the 12 sons of Jacob, the two most prominent of his sons are Joseph and Judah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, watch this. Of the 12 sons of Jacob, the two most prominent sons are Joseph and Judah. Now, I want you to watch the screen. Matthew 1, 3 says, And Judah begat Perez and Zerah from Tamar. Said, okay, so uh, Judah has two sons, Perez and Zerah from Tamar. I know why you can't shout. See, see, you can't shout when when you read that because what you don't know is Judah is both the father and grandfather of the same boys. Say what? <laughs> you talking about Jetta? This dude, Judah, the one by which, whose line, Jesus is a direct Descendant Judah, one of the twelve sons of Jacob, in the same act, his sons are also his grandchildren. Doc Barclay, that's jacked up. That, that, doc, that, bro, B, that's messed up. Ooh. I got 10 seconds left. <laughs> I'm going to cut my clock off here. Uh, are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Let me preview it for you. Okay, if I back up one slide, lead dog back up one slide for me. Last statement on the slide says, of the 12 sons of Jacob, the two most prominent of his sons are Joseph and Judah. And you'll remember from the story in Genesis 37, watch this. Just like Jacob's mother, Rebecca, had a special child 
a favorite child, and Jacob was that child. Watch this. It just went on to the next generation. Jacob had a special child that he gave a coat of many colors. And he gave it to Joseph. Now, it wasn't wrong for Jacob to give Joseph a coat. He just should have made 11 more coats. But he didn't. Because he played favorites with his kids. Just like his mother played favorite with him. Come here. Come. I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to set you up now for next Wednesday night. You don't want to miss next Wednesday night. You don't want to miss next Wednesday night. I, I want you to watch this. Genesis 37 through Genesis 50. Okay, let, 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 me, let me back up. Let me back up. Genesis 37 through Genesis 50 is about one man, Joseph. The whole narrative from Genesis 37 to Genesis 50, the lead character, the storyline is about Joseph. His brothers put him in a pit. He's going down to Egypt. He's saving uh, the world from starvation. See, it's all about, watch this, Joseph. One more time. From Genesis 37 to Genesis 50. The narrative is about Joseph. Except one chapter. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You, you said from Genesis 37 to, jo uh, to, to Genesis 50 is all about Joseph. That's right. Except one chapter. The story of Joseph is interrupted in Genesis 38. <laughs> Where a whole chapter is talking about Judah. From Genesis 37 to Genesis 50, the narrative is about Joseph, except for one chapter. And that one chapter is chapter 38. And the story is about Judah. Why? I'll tell it and show it to you next week. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This stuff just excites me. The Bible excites me. You'll have to forgive me. But until then, may the Lord of the harvest bless you. And may he bless you real good.